which of the following elements is most likely to lose electrons? Um, so again, as I just mentioned, um, hopefully you remember like metals are obviously gonna lose electrons um, more. So like, and then it go, that also goes like, um, they get less um, metallic character going across and more going down. So cesium is essentially the most metallic. And if we look at neon, that's a noble gas. It certainly is not metallic. That doesn't wanna lose electrons at all. Fluorine um, is a non-metal, it wants to gain electrons. And hydrogen is, um, even though it's in group one, it's considered a um, non-metal because it's only got one valence electron and likes to uh, share electrons. So that's, it would be cesium. Um, which noble gas does not have eight valence uh, electrons? And uh, so basically that would be helium. And, I, and I'll just again show you, like remember helium is the one that's in uh, group one and uh, that only has an S orbital. So helium can only hold, it only has two electrons and um, it does have a, a full valence shell because the uh, S subshell or only holds two. Um, so that would be uh, helium. All of these others are noble gases but um, they all have uh, eight valence electrons. All right, and which of the following atoms has the greatest, um, oh yeah, that one I think. Yeah, most likely to lose electrons. And then the greatest metallic character, well, this is basically the same question as the last one, so it's going to be cesium. And we can look at all these others. Um, so cesium is on the um, bottom, uh, left. Now francium technically would be more um, metallic than uh, cesium, but it's uh, highly radioactive and um, essentially does not uh, exist in uh, appreciable quantities. So cesium is the most metallic that, um, that exists in appreciable quantities. Um, if we look at all these others, copper, copper is right here, and then we've got gold right here, and uh, Brillium, brillium's right here. So none of these are gonna be quite as metallic or as cesium. So cesium is the most metallic. Um, okay, match what happens to electrons with each bond type. So we've got um, a metallic bonds. This is where electrons are loose in an electron C, ionic bonds, electrons are transferred and covalent bonds, electrons are shared. And okay, the octet rule applies in which of the following cases? Um, so this is uh, when S and P subshells are filling. Um, so it does not apply um, when D and F uh, subshells are filling. Um, only S and P, because P holds six electrons, S holds two, that's eight total. Um, so uh, these two answers would be wrong because uh, this one has D and it has D and F and it does not always apply. So D and F have a little bit more complicated filling pattern than the S and P. Um, all right, so how many of each type of atom are there in the formula um, Ca3PO42? And so for the calcium is easy because the subscript just tells us it's three. And then for the PO4, there's two of them. So that means two um, pho uh, phosphorus. So one and two would be wrong because it's two, not one. And then we got, uh, there's four times two is eight oxygen. So it would be the bottom one. Um, the charge of a vanadium ion in the compound V2O5 is, and here if I can get my little tools, I'll write this down. Um, okay, because it's handy to do it this way where you, um, okay. Let's see if we can, I was getting the thing so I could draw. Well, it's not working. There's always something with technical stuff. I'm not sure why it's not drawing. All right, well, I guess I won't be able to do that, but you do the crossover method. So like if we cross over, um, so vanadium um, is gonna have a charge of plus five which is like from, we get that from the subscript for oxygen and oxygen's minus two. And we know that oxygen is in, um, it's in group, uh, 
uh, six. So it's got um, basically um, six valence electron wants to gain two to have a charge of minus two, which you can also see from the oxidation state here. Um, so that would be, we know that oxygen's correct there, so it's gonna be uh, plus five for vanadium. So an oxygen is always gonna be minus two, the, um, and vanadium is a non-metal, or I mean, I'm sorry, metal, so it's always gonna gain electrons, so plus five. Okay, what is the correct name of the compound whose formula is N2O4? So that's dye, and then it's nitrogen, um, and then it's oxygen, and then there's four, so that's tetra. So dye, nitrogen, tetraoxide, right here. What is the formula for an ionic compound made of barium and nitrogen? And um, so this would be, um, so in this case, we have to figure out what charge these want. Barium is in group two, so it's gonna form plus two ions, and nitrogen is in group five, so that's going to, um, uh, it wants to gain, so five and it wants eight, so it's gonna um, have a charge of minus three. So um, again, we cross over, so minus three and plus two. Um, so that's gonna be barium three um, and two is the compound that this is going to form. Um, and what is the name of uh, COS? So co CO is cobalt. And then we've got sulfur, it's gonna be sulfide. We change it to sulfide. Um, so it's gonna be cobalt sulfide. So that's um, one of these three, uh, but then we have to decide which one. So cobalt is a non-metal, it's right here, and sulfur is a metal. So this is an ionic compound. So um, it's not gonna be the mono, because we only use the um, mono, di, and tri prefixes if it's a, um, uh, covalent compound, which is it's not, it's an ionic compound. And then um, the number, the oxidation number, cobalt has two different oxidation states. So we have to make sure that we get, uh, there's actually two different compounds that can form between cobalt and sulfur. So to make sure that we're talking about the correct one, um, which is um, cobalt, it's got cobalt two. Um, so that would be the top oxidation state, and then sulfur has an oxidation state of minus two, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So COS is gonna be cobalt two sulfide, so we need this one right here. Um, what would the formula for diiodine pentasulfide be? So this one is I2 and then pentasulfide, that's five, S5. Okay, when a nonmetal bonds with a um, nonmetal, um, so again, this uh, was alluded to in the uh, matching, but basically we have a, um, a covalent bond is um, involved. Um, that's, well, that's one choice, and actually we're looking, so I was thinking that was correct, but then if we looked here, electrons are shared, that's true. Um, and a molecular um, compound forms, so we have a, a that's by definition, a compound forms, we have a, a more, one or more nonmetals, or two or more nonmetals joined together. Um, so that is uh, true. So it's gonna be all of the above are true. Okay, and which Lewis structure below correctly represents KCl? Um, so KCl, again, we have to know what kind of compounds. We use the brackets when we're talking about ionic compounds because we're trying showing that the electrons are transferred. Um, and we don't use brackets um, if it's a, a covalent compound because electrons are shared. But if we look at potassium, that's a metal, and Cl chlorine is a non-metal, so that's it's going to be one with brackets. So that's going to be either this one or this one. Um, and then uh, basically, we have uh, potassium has one valence electron that it gets rid of, and chlorine has seven and gains one, so it's going to have eight total. So it's going to be this one. And um, which of the following is a molecular compound? Um, so again, we've got a, it's gonna have two um, non-metals. So calcium, again, that's a um, metal, so that's not going to be a um, molecular compound. Barium's a metal, so that's not gonna be. Um, potassium also is a metal, so none of those three. But if we have a look at nitrogen monoxide, 
N and O, those are both nonmetals on the right side of the periodic table. So that is a molecular compound. And we're almost to the end here. Um, which statement is true about polyatomic ions? Um, polyatomic ions, um, again, we'll just read all these. Um, polyatomic ions are held together by covalent bonds um, and polyatomic ions can form ionic bonds with other ions. So that sounds right. Let's read the others. Um, polyatomic ions are held together by ionic bonds. And this is not true. Polyatomic ions are made up of um, nonmetals, so they form covalent bonds. Um, and then, but they're charged, so they can form uh, uh, ionic bonds. So it's not going to be number two because that's like the opposite of what is actually the fact. Um, polyatomic ions contain both metals and nonmetals. So the polyatomic ion itself contains nonmetals only. It's a covalent bond. And polyatomic ions are always negatively charged. That's not true either because there are some that are positively charged. So it's going to be the first one. And then the image below shows which of the following and um, a resonance structure of a compound. Um, so that looks right because we have a resonance structure is when we have a um, bond that switches sides. Um, and then we have resonance structure of an, an ionic compound. Um, ionic compounds don't form resonance structures because resonance structure forms when um, electrons are shared and move back and forth in a bond. Um, a polyatomic ion. This is not a polyatomic ion because it does not have a charge. And um, that would be the, the determining uh, factor. So there are polyatomic ions that take, contain S and O, but in this case, it's uncharged, so it's not an ion. Um, a resonance structure of a metallic compound, and is that, that is not true either. Um, there actually is no such thing. It's always going to be um, a, a molecule. And, and then the SeO2 does not have a resonance structure. I guess that doesn't quite make sense, that um, choice there. But in any ways, it uh, clearly does have a resonance structure. So it's going to be a resonance structure of a molecule.